Wonderful rate of game. Let's see us get our butts kicked. Travis is the first player at CU 31 season to have three consecutive 100 yard receiving games. Charles Johnson, twice by my dear friend Michael Westbrook. Cam, after missing most of the season over, had 11 solo tackles. He was a dog out there. Three tackles for a loss in the quarterback hurry. Defense after the game, opening TD for 49 yards out. Nebraska, other some scoring drives were added heavily by penalties, which is something we're not proud of. I think we had over 100 yards penalty. I think they had maybe one or two more yards in penalties, but both were, were crazy. Nebraska, nine none scoring drives of 47 plays for 127 yards, 2.7 average per play with three, uh, three and outs and three other drives at fewer than five plays. That's a good thing. That's positive. Shiloh, injury update, had surgery on Sunday, I believe, came through it all right. He woke up, medicated highly, saying he was going to play this week. But that's just Shiloh. Said some other things on the medication that I choose not to share. Uh, I don't want to go there. Everything else was cool. Let me start out with the main thing. Um, whoever reported that I told uh, the band not to play the fight song, that's idiotic. Y'all know that. Like when you saw that, you know that was a lie. Um, we got to start having some kind of uh, accountability to this. I understand that this is a free and an open world that everybody is not a journalist. Everybody's not an analyst. Everybody's really hadn't put in a lot of work to do what you all do. I'm thankful for many of y'all that take your job and your craft serious. And consequently, you get facts before you run with false narratives. But please know that that stuff affects people. Um, me, you've been attacking me my whole life, so I'm good. But other people that's involved, band members, uh, uh, Buffs faithful and uh, alumni and all that, sometimes they don't know what believe, to believe. And oftentimes in life, we believe the first thing we hear, in which we shouldn't. I just would challenge you to be more responsible with your reporting. And uh, I never wanted to get personal. So when it gets personal, you got to really think about that. You got to understand I have a huge platform. I could really get personal if I wanted to. But I choose not to do that because that's not right. Some things in life is just not right. And I don't want to go there and I won't go there. But think about it. Just my family alone, the platform is enormous. If we really wanted to go there, we could go there. But we would never do that. We weren't raised like that. We weren't brought up like that. We were brought up to love that neighbor as much as we can. Now let's continue. Let's get to the good stuff. Thank you. There she go. Yep, here I am. <laughs> Nikki Edwards, CU Sports Report. Um, just beginning of the week, what is the main message that you're trying to instill in your team to really get back in this game? Um, I think second half defensively, they did that. They did that. Well, we got to start strong. Um, really accountability, understanding this urgency. I challenge them if, uh, if your person that you love the most, that you care for the most, was dependent upon your performance at practice today, how would you go about it? That was the challenge today. So that's how we're going about it. We are holding everybody accountable, including myself, in a sense of urgency. Hey, Coach. Auburn how you Hayes, doing? Sports. Um, looking ahead to CSU when they've played one of the best teams in the nation and a lot lesser opponent in Northern Colorado, obviously two different outcomes. How does that impact your game plan and your scouting this week? Say that first part again. I'm sorry. When you, when you play a team like Texas, when CSU plays a team like Texas, that's one of the best in the nation, and yeah. they play a much lesser team like Northern Colorado, yeah. obviously two different results. How does that impact your scouting game plan? When you, they it's a good question. Two ends of the spectrum. Well, they're consistent with the plays they run. They're consistent with the personnel changes that they have. Um, they're consistent with some of the things they do. So you scout the consistency in what they run. Um, I know the uh, wonderful gentleman that coaches them said we look a lot like the same uh, team as last season. I'm not going to say that about them. I'm going to say um, they're doing some wonderful things. And uh, we just got to be stout to stop them in all phases. Hey, Coach, have you gotten a rough timeline yet on Shiloh in terms of how much you might um, Knowing Shiloh? 
Shallow, Shallow has God in his corner, I'm telling you. I had never seen nothing like it, the healing ability. I think Shallow was out four, maybe four and a half months with a, with knee, with a knee surgery. I mean, that's how quickly he came back. Then coming back from a shoulder surgery as well. I mean, Shallow is, he, he has the hand of God on him. So I would say two to three weeks, I would say. We saw Carter stop my replace yeah, him. Yeah. What, what does he bring to the mix? Though? Carter's big, physical, could play corner, could play safety, could run. Um, had a couple phenomenal open field tackles. Um, he's the future kid that we went and got out of high school, and he's been uh, doing a wonderful job. He's the son of a professional player. His daddy raised him uh, profoundly. I mean, we, we talk often. He's one of my dearest friends that played for the Cowboys with me. And uh, we live right around the corner from one another back in the day. But Carter brings a lot to the table. To compliment Cam as well. Hey, Coach. Uh, Jack Harlow with Buffalo. Jack Harlow. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, you mentioned after the game that Shadozier and I believe Isaiah Harge were dealing with. Um, yeah, as well as, as well as Shador. And Shador. Oh, Sorry, so, you so you know. Um, it was a TV timeout. I never, and the doctors don't want to take the guys out into the locker room while the play is going. So it's professional that you wait to a TV timeout to take the guys in the locker room to get them checked out. And um, some of you guys failed to mention that Chidozi was 10 steps in front of Shador when they were going in. Chidozi was 10 steps in front of Shador when they were going in to get checked out by the doctors. Do you have an update on those three and how they're, how they're doing today? Uh, Chidozi, uh, we're praying for him that he can make it back. You know, I like to see one good day of practice before we put those guys out there. I don't know if uh, Harge is going to play this week. Uh, Hayden, I think he's out. Yeah, I think he's out this week. Uh, who else? Who else? That's it. I think that's it. I may have forgotten one or two guys, but I, I feel like that's it. Bentley, is, is he practiced today. He's getting it together. He's still limping a little bit. Probably get him tomorrow off because we know what we're going to get from him on, him on Saturday. Hey, Coach. How are you doing, sir? Good. good. How are you? Good. Um, you've mentioned a couple times but, you know, last week um, that you, you know you need to get the running game going. Yeah. Um, what does it take to actually commit to it and get it going? Like well, you, you – Sometimes the, the game dictates certain things you must do. Um, I, I think you guys see that we, I don't know, no third and shorts, fourth and shorts. We try to, to do that. We try to run the fo football. It's an attitude. It's a straight attitude. You, you got to whoop your guy on that particular play. And uh, I think we've committed to it on certain plays. We just got to do a better job in uh, getting to first down. We, today, we had third and ones. We had third and one from the 35, I believe, you know, a couple of times. If they got the first down, they continued to drive. If they didn't, the next group is up. So we practice certain things uh, weekly. It just depends on the flow of the game. But we got to do a better job of running the football. That takes a lot of pressure off your quarterback and make things uh, easier for Pat. So as a follow-up to that, I know speaking to offensive linemen over the years, they, they love run blocking more than pass blocking a lot of times. They, they I don't know that. about that. I don't know if that's a true statement. Okay. Well. I've had a lot tell me that, but either yeah. way. Have you um, talked to ours? I don't. I yeah, don't so. That, that, so you can't, can't say that now. Okay. Yeah. Well, in run blocking, they can be more aggressive, right? Yes, yes, sir. Forward. So uh, my question would be, is that something that maybe this line could benefit from, like, they can come out and be aggressive, let those dogs out and let them be aggressive right from the start? Well, that's the approach. But you got to understand when you're looking at certain fronts, you got to check out of certain things because it's not beneficial. You got to play the game that tells you how to play it. So oftentimes, just look at the fronts and see why we do certain things. And I tell you, if it's a heavy box, you you you're not going to be successful in running the football in that uh, aspect. So sometimes the the thought, what what you're thinking, what what you're thinking. I'm sorry, my floor to come at me every now and then. <laughs> what you're thinking may be, may not be correct until you really watch the game closely and understand the box and understand the opposing team's tendencies. Hey, Coach, Ryan Scholes from Ralphie Report. So kind of building off the run blocking question, mm -hmm. protections were an issue on Saturday, as yes, you mentioned. Sir. Have you spoken to the offensive line since then to of kind of instill confidence? And what have you said to the group? Of course. I, I feel like we got the right guys. Um, you may see us shake something up a little bit. Phil Lodeholt is a wonderful offensive line coach. Pat does a
tremendous job in calling plays as he did the first game. So you just can't take a snapshot of one game and not understand the first game. Well, we have over 500 yards of offense. I ain't hear all these questions. But I understand it comes with the territory, so you got to ask them. But game to game, you're gonna, it's going to be something else. Like we go out there and, and run for a couple hundred yards, you're going to say, well, why didn't you throw on third and two? <laughs> you know, you know, you, I didn't you throw on third and two. You had a heavy box. You got to let your door take those one on ones. So it's going to always be questioned, but we deserve it. When you when you lose, you're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be prosecuted and persecuted. And I'm good. I've been on the cross for a long time, and I'm still hanging. Go straight ahead, uh, Brandon Kristall from KOA and Gorilla Sports. How do you impress upon your team that different rivalries mean different things? Because the Nebraska rivalry is a huge tradition, but mm -hmm. CU and CSU, these are your neighbors that you deal right. with every day. So how they do you know. relay that? They know. I mean, all these kids have social media handles, and I'm pretty sure they know. They spend a quantity of time on social. So they know what time it is when they came here. Um, it was explained from the former players, the players that we retained from last season, about how important these rivalry games are. But honestly, to tell you the truth, these games are truly important. But every game is a huge game for us. Every week is a huge game for us. John Trish, 9 News. What is maybe the benefit in playing an emotionally charged road game and then having another one the next week? Another? Emotionally charged road game. Oh, you mean two back to back? Yeah. Um, the benefit is you got to get up. Prayerfully, you learn your lesson from a week ago, and you got to get up. You got to come out ready to play. From the first snap on, you got to be ready to play in all positions, all phases, coaching included. We got to be ready to coach. We got to be ready to play. We got to be ready to execute. You don't have time to wait to the second half to try to hit the engine light and turn the car on. You can't do that. You got to be ready to go. And uh, I love it that they're on national television and they get to showcase their talents as well as. Uh, you know, the same thing that bless you and, and shows your promise, so shows your uh, inconsistencies. So you got to be careful of that. But if you prepare well during the week, you don't have to worry about being inconsistent. If you prepare well and study, you're going to be okay. And that's what we're impressing upon our team. Coach, how are you? Troy Finnegan, CU Sports Report. Following up on that first, does it make it easier to, to get up for this week after last year when they came in here and gave you guys a scare? No, no. Every game is you got to get up for it. it if you – last week is, was phenomenal. You know, you got your butt kicked. So you got to get up. I mean, you know that. But it, it shouldn't matter. Like, whatever, whenever you see somebody on that schedule, you're supposed to give up. Get up. I'm sorry. We, don't, we shouldn't have to rah-rah and, and, and psych them up and, and, and just fire them up to go out there and do what they're gifted to do. We just got to make sure they're prepared and they're studied and they're ready. And then on the offense, back quickly, we talked to Pat a couple of weeks ago about his opening scripts. How much input do you have in that, and does that change after a week where you guys started really slowly on that side of the ball? Uh, you started slowly because a couple of things transpired. I mean, the first ball got tipped, the second ball got dropped, and now, now you, you know you're in third and long. So things like that play a, a tremendous role in, in what we do. And I think we came back the next series to did somewhat, not somewhat of the same, but close. I think we had another incompletion that we, we got to do a better job with that. Now we're backed up in our goal line and we make a, a, a crazy, um, not crazy, I wanted to say something else, but I can't say that. It's not, it wasn't profanity, by the way. But Shador has to be smarter from our end zone. Hey, Coach. Uh, Jason Jones, Sports Illustrated. Uh, last week, there was an alleged racist uh, oh incident. Oh, Lord. And I just want to know if you'd like to uh, comment. Alleged. What was that? Racist incident after the game in Lincoln. Um, I don't know anything about it. I heard about it. But you got to understand, uh, whoever reported it, was it one of our guys or whatever? I don't know what 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 was said. Uh, there was a slur shouted at uh, coaches and staffers when you guys were packing up. Well, well, if they said it happened, uh, when you guys said it happened, don't it mean it happened? <laughs> that was a good one, wasn't it? You guys said a lot of things that happened and really hadn't happened. Well, I don't know anything about a racist. So I, I try to stay out of the race stuff. I don't like to play that card until I'm, I'm dealt that hand profoundly in front of others. As a coach, 
how do you balance trusting the process? You hear that like the Sixers and everything, right? Trust the process, even if it's not working in the beginning, you stick yeah. with it. Versus knowing when to make changes. Like, is that just a, is that um, a feel thing, case by case? We're one and one, and you want a bunch of changes. Not, not you, not, not you. But I'm saying you gotta understand. I just think as a coach, just in yeah. your philosophy. Oh, you know. You, you know what time it is. Before you guys even sense it, I'm out there practice every day. I'm watching film every day. I'm falling asleep watching during tape. So, and I'm going over all the practice grades as well as game grades and seeing what we are got ahead of us and what we did today. So we have a lot of knowledge in-house that you guys aren't privy to that we get to see tape every day. So when we make a change or, or we don't, there's reason. And sometimes you got to trust that we're in the inside. That's just like me coming in and tell you to turn the air down in your house. Well, shoot, I, she, she, you know, she likes it cold. Well, she likes it hot. I, you can't, I can't tell you what to do in your house because I'm not in there. I guess I really wasn't referring to your specific situation. I think I'm just talking about as a coach, when do you know, well, hey, it's not working, but I can start to see some things that are indicative of us learning versus Hey, you know, that just doesn't really I don't I don't I don't know what not working mean. Okay, we can just move on. Um, fourteen games into your tenure here, what would you say your identity is that you're I'm not building? looking for my identity, man. I'm looking to win. I'm not looking for I'm not trying to find myself. I'm not lost. I'm not looking for my identity. We're trying to win. We're trying to get guys to the next level. We're trying to graduate young men. We're trying to turn them into men, not boys. So there's a lot going on here besides just on the field. Uh, on the field is profound. That's the echo of everything. So number one, we're trying to win. I'm not looking for uh, identity. The last one I had for you today yes, is sir. over the off season, uh, Coach Norvell's family has made some derogatory comments towards your family, yeah. uh, his wife and his son. Yeah. Um, just curious how you feel about this rivalry and how you feel about your counterpart at Colorado State. Well, I, I, I had the honor and the pleasure at the Big 12 meetings um, to meet his wife. She's delightful. Excuse me? I'm not looking for an apology. I'm, I just met her. She was delightful. I, I haven't met them. I don't know. I don't judge people based off what they say when they're emotional. I can't, I can't do that, man. That's, my heart ain't built like that. But when you show me, show me who you are, I got to believe you. But I, don't, I hadn't seen that. I, I, don't, I don't know. I just met his wife, and she was delightful. Gotcha. Thank, mm. you. Thank you. Coach Leo Rivera with Scope of Sports. What role has the scout team need to play this week in order to get you guys that victory on Saturday um, night? Tremendous. They, they've been doing a great job. I, I think today, instead of going straight scout team, we did a lot of the twos versus ones. The twos pretty much ran the scout team today, and they did a phenomenal job mixing in with some of the others. Uh, but scout team is, is vital. They're vital on what they contribute. And uh, we always have uh, each week. You, we have scout team players of the week at certain positions, and they get to travel, they get to dress. And uh, we had several guys make it last week that did a phenomenal job in the scout team. So we reward those guys weekly. Two more going So, Coach, how you doing? How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. You mentioned a handful of times how quarterback Shador in particular have to look out at the defense and, you know, kind of make decisions, you know, based on yeah. the play to call. How much freedom really does Shador have at the line of scrimmage? He has freedom. To, to make those decisions, how, how much is that a part of this offense, you know, down to down? Well, he, he has freedom because he's earned it. I mean, he's a, he's a senior, he's played a lot of football, seen a lot of football, and he has a tremendous relationship with Pat. They trust one another. Um, but you got to understand, the, the mic cuts off at 15 seconds. So a lot of people, they may not show their hand until that time. So you may change it. They may change the look. So he may have to change the play based on the look. So, but he has freedom. Last one, Brian, go ahead. Hey coach, I just want to ask you one last sort of a light yes, non-football question because I talked to this gentleman the other day, but um, what impact does it have on your team to have DJ Fedora in there? DJ is saying? awesome, man. I mean, you got to understand these guys either have on headphones or, or something, everybody listens to music and he does a wonderful job of mixing it up and appeasing everyone in the locker room. 
I think uh, you got a country, uh, a few country ballads in there as well, you know, to satisfy that, that country bone that I may have sometime, uh, uh, others, uh, Trevor and some of the other guys. Uh, but he does a wonderful job in mixing it up and uh, putting a smile on the guys' faces and playing some of the, the hottest tracks that's out right now. He does a great job, and that's vital to these young men. They like to set the mood and the atmosphere for them to go out and play. So that he does a great job. I'm proud of him. That's it. Anybody else? You good? Everybody straight? Yeah, uh, Coach, what does Tyler Johnson have to do to see the field for you guys? Um, that That's more of a Coach Field question, but I would uh, – I don't want to say anything wrong that you guys sprint with. Um, Tyler's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Um, great kid, works his butt off, does a phenomenal job with his effort, um, maybe the consistency thereof. But the kid, you can't fault his effort on a daily basis. And I'm a, I'm a fan of the kid. I like him. I like him. Good kid, works his butt off. Appreciate you guys. God bless you. Remember, validate everything before you run with it.